Hey, Dan Meyer here, and today we're here for part three of how to manage virtual teams. So this training was designed for the managers of people that work in different physical locations. A lot of us in the last year or so have really had to adapt to working with virtual teams. So I'm gonna share with you some of my uh, perspective on how to engage with teams. So basically you're looking at what do you do to keep people engaged when you're not with them in person. You can't do the same kind of team building. You have different kinds of staff meetings. You can't do the same stop by and have informal conversations. You can still do all that, but it has to be done virtually. So how are companies effective at managing remote work? This is something that goes back to my time at Wells Fargo. Um, 20 years ago, I was managing virtual teams, project teams working across the, the country and occasionally even overseas, um, trying to get people on the same page to be able to do things on the Wells Fargo mutual fund website, to do things with the credit card services, uh, back office processing, to do things with the global remittance services or money transfers for their marketing. So I had a lot of experience managing uh, teams virtually. And when you do that, you get to the point where you have to really start having good uh, tactics, good skills, good plans for managing the team. And so you have to have a routine that you develop so people get used to it and know what to do to be productive and to be efficient with their time. So how can managers be effective managing virtual teams? I'll tell you how. Based on my experiences, um, working for 15 years at Wells Fargo, a lot of that working with virtual teams, and then the last 10 years, um, primarily working with call centers and virtual staffing where people are in different physical locations, including um, virtual assistants, which I have a business that has over 30 virtual assistants providing services to uh, almost 60 different clients across the world. So um, this is what we do at Sonic VA. We help people manage virtual assistants. But um, the most important thing that I'll start with is when you are doing things virtually, you have to constantly follow up, right? Um, you wanna send valuable follow-ups and not just mass follow-ups, right? Send follow-ups when they matter. So be, be timely, be concise, and don't overwhelm people, right? You wanna get them into the habit of when they get things from you, they know it's important and they read it. You don't ever want people to get something from you, whether it be a message or an email or a text, and it just be fluff, right? You know, or something, you don't wanna FYI people and everything. When you do that, then they get, you know, bombarded with what your things from you and they start tuning out to the important ones. So make sure that you keep you know, reminders, uh, give them pats in the back, um, give them things where they're able to uh, keep you and what you need them to do top of mind. This is what, how you start with sending valuable and timely follow-ups. You wanna pick the right team for team meetings. When is the best time for your team to all be in the optimal space? This is a challenge when I have people that work daytime and nighttime um, on both sides of the, of the uh, planet. So we look for optimal times where it's not too late for people in the US, but not too early for people in the Philippines. Um, we have to be aware of the time zones across the US. Um, I even have a couple clients that are in Europe, so it's really a juggling act. But you wanna consult with the team and make sure that you all agree on when's the best time for you to meet. Um, it's really hard when somebody dictates a time to meet and it's not uh, in someone's work style or work, work uh, schedule. So occasionally we have to have staff meetings and team meetings when we're not all working, but as much as possible, you wanna line things up so that you have that alignment and people are able to do the meeting within the course of their work day and not have to wake up at three in the morning uh, just for a meeting and then go back to sleep for a few more hours and then get up to work. That kind of stuff is not really good for the team. So pick the right times for meetings. Next up, you wanna have highly interactive meetings, right? So you don't wanna just talk the whole time. One thing that I hate is when people just talk, right? And right now I'm just talking. But as you see what I'm doing, I'm not just talking to the camera, just me, you're seeing things pop up, right? You're seeing images and you're seeing uh, other things to focus on. So it breaks the fact that you're just looking at me. Same thing when you're working with your team, you wanna give people a chance to say things. You wanna share things. You wanna encourage people to bring things to present. But in every case, you wanna keep you talking into the camera or one person talking to the camera to everybody limited. 10 minutes max, keep it short, keep it simple, right? A short team call um, can definitely give you direction. Even if it's only for 15, 20 minutes, have a short call and don't overdo it, right? You can have daily interactive meetings if you need to. Um, some people have daily check-in meetings to kind of like, especially if on projects, just a real quick check-in. You can use Zoom, you can use one of the dozen other um, platforms out there like Facebook's got one, Microsoft's got one. There's things that you can do to schedule uh, quick check-ins. My team, we use chat, Facebook Messenger chat, um, really is our primary way of communicating it daily. Um, we actually have inter interactive Zoom calls once a, once a, uh, a week. 
um, for our staff meetings. But that's kind of you know what you want to do is find the, the sweet spot for your team. Only schedule meetings and you have to. We don't have every meeting. There are times when everyone's busy and it's not productive to have the meeting or times we don't need the meeting. We don't have it. Don't have a meeting just to have a meeting. When you do that, you have people think of things to talk about. You have them think of things to bring to the meeting and it can cause more work. Now, if you're having a brainstorming meeting and you want to be able to get people to, to come in fresh and ready to go, plan that ahead of time. If you're having a staff meeting, have an agenda. And as soon as that agenda is done, let everyone go. You can give people the option to have some social time at the end or after, but don't make it mandatory. And you want to make sure that when you're scheduling meetings, again, you're being aware of everyone's time, both when they are working and what they're working on. Uh, it's also important when you do an engagement to keep spirits up, right? Use the reminders that we have in and around us to get people um, happy and, and remind them how valuable they are. We should have everyone's birthday down. We should send them birthday greetings. We should know their work anniversary and send them work anniversary greetings. If we're not doing it ourselves, we should have a virtual assistant or a, somebody helping us do that so the team is always feeling engaged. You want to make sure that you're doing things occasionally to share. One of the things I could do when I have a staff meeting is everyone go around the you know little room um, in the old days in the virtual room nowadays to go around the room and share something, you know, one good thing from the past week or something you're looking forward to on your next holiday or what's, what you're looking forward to most in the new year. Just real quick, you know, everyone go around quick, quick uh, sharing, doing something like that gives everyone a chance to kind of like engage so that they're not checked out later on in the meeting. You can also look for times to do quick, you know, stress uh, relievers. You can do stretching. You can like take a moment for everyone to go take a quick break if the meeting's going on more than a half hour or so. You don't want people to be sitting there to focus on the the video for more than you know a half hour max, more likely 15, 20 minutes. You should keep that down and then use the time accordingly to keep spirits up, right? Keep people engaged. Um, the next is you want to check in, right? You want to be able to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with team members, right? You want to do check-ins. Again, you can do some of it during Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or uh, text. You don't have to do them all on a, a call, but you should do them on a regular basis. You should offer them to your team if they need them, and then you should look for opportunities to give feedback, positive, constructive feedback, or if necessary, accountability um, conversations, and have these on a predetermined, pre-scheduled amount. Don't have them be surprises. Don't say, hey, I just want to check in in the middle of someone's workday. Say, hey, can we check in on Friday or can we check in on Monday? Give them a chance to get ready for it. If they want to check in with you sooner, give them the opportunity to do that. Have the open door policy online, but don't necessarily um, just pop in and expect someone to be able to just share because they may have so much going on. They're too busy to really think um, about what you want to think about. They're focused on what they have to do. So um, doing this kind of thing is really important. Checking in, again, reminders for birthdays, anniversaries, good jobs. Um, do them both publicly and do them privately. Do them both, right? So public ones are good for people that like public acknowledgement, but not everyone values that. Some people get more value out of the individual acknowledgement. So do them both. And then the next thing I'll talk about is a drive, right? You have to have a collaboration drive, a shared space, right? We use Trello, um, we use Asana, and we use Google Drive. We also use occasionally Dropbox. We've tried Monday. Um, there's different tools out there. Um, for one of my teams, um, they're very Asana heavy, so we do Asana. Another of my teams is very Trello um, so heavy, so we use Trello. And we all use Google Drive to share uh, documents and collaborate. So make sure you have good project management tools to keep your team engaged with each other, allow them all to be able to interact. Make sure that you know they have the right accesses and they can they're empowered to share things when needed. Um, but a good project management strategy through a, a common drive can give your sense a team of connectedness that they need to be successful. Um, the next thing is keep your team looped in on performance, right? So um, at a big picture once a month, you should probably have some kind of this is how we've done this month kind of thing. A lot of times we send out a newsletter or we send out like a summary, a month in summary. And, um, and we use, you know, business dashboard, we use charts and graphs, talk about the numbers. Let's also talk about people's performance, when people stepped up, when people did, recognize them. A lot of big corporate environments do a lot of employee of the month kind of stuff. You can do that kind of stuff virtually as well. You don't have to get rid of employee of the month celebrations because you're not in person anymore. Keep track of team performances and individual performances and celebrate both. Keep everyone accountable and aware of where you're at and where you want them to go and how you're going to lead them there. Super important stuff. The next thing is to clarify individual goals. So you have the team goals where the business is going, and then not only just recognition, but just goals, right? Give people a way to constantly measure themselves. Where are they stacking up? 
What do they have to do to improve? What kind of things do you want to see out of them for them to be able to level up? Whether it be level up into a promotion, level up into a raise, level up into a new skill. Um, when I was in my corporate days, we did a lot of things around this, and it was really effective in helping people figure out how to navigate a long-term commitment with a company they're working for, with the employer. You should be doing the same thing. Even if you have one employee, you want to constantly give them the ability to clarify where they stand. So you can build this into one-on-ones you do it once a month. You can have some kind of reporting tool. You can do something where they can look and see where they stack up towards their peers or towards a, a general goal. In some cases, you don't want to share personal stuff, so maybe you mask it or you do an average of where the team is at, but you want people to get a sense of where they stack up and where they're going and how they're going to go from where they're at to where you think they should be. So make sure that you build individual goals and well. So those are the things that I think you should do to engage you know, virtual employees effectively, right? So um, you, want to, you want to manage their time by being aware of what they're doing and how they're doing it and when they're doing it and being realistic about goal setting when it comes to the times as far as meetings as far as check-ins as far as follow-ups those all should be strategic the boss has to be on top of all this stuff and you may not be able to manage all the details yourself so you may want to have a virtual assistant that can manage a lot of that for you reminders on birthdays putting together the agenda sending out reminders doing follow-ups those are all good things that you can delegate so you want to focus on what you do best and that's leading and that's doing the things that a leader has to do and you can delegate that to a lot of the other things to people that are around you that can actually be better at it than you can because they can be more consistent and give more clarity and build a more of a sense of certainty so if you're managing a team virtually consistency from the top is huge success will not happen if you're inconsistent if you don't honor your your meeting times if you're constantly you know, canceling things if you're inconsistent with the way you communicate with the team if your message isn't clear because you're not saying the same thing over and over again to the same people if you're not really able to build a sense of certainty so they know what's expected of them you're going to have trouble the keys to being successful with virtual teams is for you to be consistent have clarity and build certainty Again, you don't have to do it alone. If you need help, hire a virtual assistant. That's what Sonic VA does, S-O-N-I-C-V-A dot com. Go check it out. You can hire a virtual assistant today that can help manage all the administrative stuff you need. They can also do things besides it, help you administratively. They can help you with social media. They can help, you know, video edit videos. They can help you do graphic design for in team engagement kind of stuff. You want to do, you know, like little celebrations. You want to do training videos. You want to do something to keep your team motivated, engaged. You can have a VA help you with that. So this is something I've done throughout my career. Almost 30 years now, I've been working virtually. And this is something that I've learned that is key. You have to be consistent and you have to communicate with clarity and you have to build certainty about what's expected. You do those things, you're going to be successful. Again, thank you for your time. I hope things are working out for you and your virtual team. Now go out there and do something cool to manage your team with a virtual flair. Have a great day.